What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Young Thou Game Channel. I'm AJ Gels. Uh, guys, this is, uh, I guess, part two of uh, my weekly show uh, this week. Uh, if you didn't catch the last one, um, well, go check it out. Um, but basically, this week, I'm breaking from my usual format. I'm deciding to do, I, after this one, I have enough stories probably for a short third episode. Uh, my first one went about 40 minutes, and I have about the same number of stories uh, on this one. Um, so the, the, the basic idea is I'm kind of breaking from my usual format of, uh, just one show at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on a Friday. Um, I'm doing three just because there's so much post E3, you know, stuff that was on the floor that was just not in the press conferences. Um, so that's kind of what I'm covering with, uh, with these videos, uh, for my weekly show. Uh, but I will be back to the usual formats, uh, Friday, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific next week. Uh, please come check that out. Check out the Let's Plays I do on this channel. Uh, check out all my E3 uh, press conference coverages. Uh, you know, all those are all they're, they're in their own playlist. They're also on the channel. Go check them out. Uh, find me on Facebook, Twitter, my website down in the description below. Hit me up in the comments. Like, subscribe if you're enjoying the videos. You want to help support the channel. Uh, you ever want to talk to me? Always happy to chat with you guys in the comments. Uh, without further ado, here we go. Uh, a kind of a short one, kind of short punctuated one to start off the bat. Uh, according to the official website for Crackdown 3, Crackdown 3 will be released in 2017 as opposed to the original 2016 release Vince Ingenito of IGN um honestly I I didn't know that Crackdown 3 was in development I I hadn't heard um I, I really I didn't play Crackdown 2 I played Crackdown 1 thought it was good I uh, thought it was fun I, I had no interest to play the sequel and here I am <laughs> Uh, but no, I mean, I, 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 I don't know if, uh, depending on when it comes out, uh, if I have the time, I'll probably play it and maybe play it on the channel. So I uh, keep your eyes out for that, uh, sometime in 2017 for Crackdown 3. Uh, PlayStation 4 owners will get a chance to play Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered 30 days before those on Xbox. Uh, the game, in a, basically in a, in a deal, um, with Sony, uh, basically the way it's going to work is that, um, while, uh, it, words are, words are kind of hard. Uh, while Modern Warfare, I believe, is supposed to be is set for November 4th. I believe that's the release date. Uh, it's set for November 4th right now. So basically, early October is when the PS4 owners should be able to get their hands on uh, Modern Warfare Remastered. Um, as opposed to those on Xbox, they'll have to wait the extra um, 30 days and get the game in November. Article by Jonathan Dornbush of IGN. Um... Now into the actual, the new Modern War, uh, the new Call of Duty game, um, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, um, or Infinite Warfare, not Infinity. Um, I'm very interested in this game. Uh, the little bit of gameplay that I saw um, really interested me, uh, you know, I, and, and that's something, because usually I'm not terribly excited for a um, Call of Duty yearly release. Um, this one really, it kind of piqued my interest. You know, I kind of like the just the fluidity of the game between, you know, it's like you set where you want to go, going into the, uh, into your hangar, flying your little starship, you know, dogfighting, going boots on the ground, back into your starfighter, back into your ship, and then, you know, I, I, I really like this loop, it's very interesting to me, especially the fact that it's being done with no load time, or it's seemingly, from what I saw, it's done with no load times, we'll see, uh, come November when this game actually launches, um, but yeah, I, I, I'm very excited uh, to see what Infinite Wars, uh, Warfare is going to bring us. Um, but this is from um, uh, this is according to uh, Jacob Minkoff and uh, Taylor Kurosaki, uh, both of Infinity Ward. Um, it, it, they they're basically saying that Infinite Warfare, and I quote, is drawn from classic war movies, not science fiction. And that quote comes from the article, uh, not from those two. Um, this was really interesting uh, to me because you know I'm like, well, well, how is this more World War? Sorry, I'm roll my chair is rolling on top of one of my cords. Um, how how does this work? The fact that because this seems super sci-fi to me, um, but uh, the article kind of goes on and kind of talks about how they reference uh, movies such as uh, Black Hawk Down and uh, Saving Private Ryan for this movie. You know this idea. Um, uh, Minkoff and uh, Kurosaki kind of went on, you know, kind of saying that the idea that 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 the kind of the themes that they're kind of touching on with this um, one is, and I quote: uh, "It's not about getting home. It's not about protecting his men. It's about completing the mission, 
no matter what. That's from, you know, that's uh, what Saving Private Ryan, uh, you know, the main plot of that game is kind of, or, or movies about. Um, so, you know, that, that kind of idea, that kind of theme is brought into um, Infinite Warfare. And uh, as they put it, you know, it's like fighting for the guy next to you and Brotherhood, you know, from Black Hawk Down. Um, which just kind of makes sense because if this, from what I from what I remember from when this game got announced, uh, your main character kind of takes over the ship as the highest ranking officer after the, you know, the, I'm going to guess Admiral, but I don't know whatever, whoever runs the ship before, after, you know, he's, he, uh, I believe gets killed in battle. Uh, your character then becomes kind of the new captain. Um so I guess this is kind of, he, he's being brought up to lead and to complete the mission, yet he's also fighting for, you know, his brothers, and I, 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 there, I believe there are female soldiers, so brothers and sisters. Now, when I say men in this, I'm sure they mean men as in people, bodies, on the ground, you know, and that, that idea, in a, uh, uh, you know, soldiers. Um, jeez. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, like I said, I'm very excited. Um, I think this campaign's Hopefully, if they really do touch on these ideas, these themes, um, this Call of Duty is going to be much deeper, more in depth than we've seen from a Call of Duty game, uh, and I really think that's uh, that's going to be a good thing, and I cannot wait to see it um, come this November. Um, in, in a very interesting way of revealing a game, uh, Microsoft is handing out flash drives to the press that on on these contain a contain a file called Bulletstorm Remastered. The drive contain this file on this drive basically contains screenshots and a and I quote slide that states the title will launch in spring 2017. Uh, that quote came from an article by Eddie Kitch at GameSpot. Um, I find this very interesting because I loved the original um, Bulletstorm. You know, it was, it was very arcadey. It, it, it was a not a new idea, but I mean, it was a big over the top dumb shooter, and I loved the crap out of that game, um, and I, and I think it would look really cool on the next-gen consoles, cannot wait to see what's, uh, what's gonna happen with that, um, but, uh, basically the original dropped back in 2011, um, uh, by the developer People Can Fly, who recently, I believe last year, regained their kind of independence from, um, Epic Games, so, in it's also known that, uh, People Can Fly, I remember talking about this, oh, well, probably about a month ago, uh, that they are currently in the works with a new AAA shooter uh, that will be coming in 2017. So this might be uh, what I mean. I doubt it because they're saying new and you know a bullet storm isn't new. Um, but it, but it will be interesting to see what's going to happen if this game actually does come out, which I really hope it does because I I want to play that on this channel. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, I, I got a lot of this information uh, from two articles, one by Eddie McKitch at GameSpot, and the other uh, by Matt Porter of IGN. Speaking of first-person shooters, I guess, uh, Sony has revealed its PSVR aim controller. Um, and I quote, uh, it's an evolution of the old PlayStation Move sharpshooter. This uh, That was pulled from directly from the article. Um, basically, this accessory will be necessary uh, to play the game Farpoint uh, that was revealed at the Sony press conference. Uh, and that uh, the, sharp the Move sharpshooter uh, will use one-to-one -one tracking uh, basically, to make far to make far point. Uh, this is also from the article, and I quote: "One of the most natural FPSs to date." Uh, currently, there is no word on release date or price for the game. Uh, article by Alicia Judge of IGN. Um, yeah, I, I cannot. I, I cannot wait to see this. Uh, also, since I didn't say this earlier, I apologize. Uh, that uh, Infinite Warfare, where I talked about uh, you know the the um, the references for that game. Uh, that article was by Kelly Plaguey of IGN. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mention that. Um, but no, uh, I, I really don't have much to say about this. Um, I don't know, Farpoint looked kind of weird to me, and it, that, that was probably one of the games that I had the least interest in uh, from the Sony press conference. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's interesting, um, again, it, it, because, again, my, my, my big problem with these, um, you know, it's with those... PlayStation Move things, you know, the, the that they're like the Wii modes and whatnot. They're always, they always require such grandiose movements and much over the top action, or uh, uh, over the top actions, uh, for just to read a little bit. So, if they really can get like the one to one tracking, basically, like the idea is while you're wearing the headset, you know, if something is right here, you pull over in this direction, you, you shoot, it's going to hit. 
it's going to shoot exactly where you're aiming. So, I don't know. I, I really hope this works out, uh, especially for those uh, who are very excited for PSVR and Four Points. Um, I don't know. Again, we'll see uh, what happens with uh, PSVR uh, later this year. Um, we also now have information on what will be a part of the $99.99 Dishonored 2 Collector's Edition. And that's $99.99. That's not, so basically $100. Um, and also, I, I, I always have to say this whenever I talk about price. I am speaking in American currency. I am American, if you can't tell by my accent. Uh, um, so I am speaking in American currency. Um, basically, the Collector's Edition will include a um, replica of Corvo's mask. I believe it will be wearable. I hope so, because I kind of want to get this... I now want this edition so I can wear the mask while I play the game. Um, <laughs> we'll feature uh, Corbo's mask and a stand. A replica of Emily's ring, if you've seen the promotional material. Uh, she has a ring. So, you know, uh, and a uh, display case for it. A, quote, full-color propaganda poster. I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's kind of a replica of a poster from the game. Uh, we'll feature the game on, in a metal case. Uh, the Digital Imperial Assassin Pack, uh, which is, it, it's DLC, will give you certain basic, I, I'm assuming it's I, things like extra coins, uh, new bone charms that will kind of give you a, a look into some more lore. So more, uh, you know, like I said, some DLC stuff. Uh, and a digital copy of Dishonored Definitive Edition, article by Marty Sleeve of IGN. Uh, now into some actual details about um, Dishonored 2, for some reason I almost said Dark Souls. Um, the creator, uh, the co-creative director of Arcane Studios, Harvey Smith, uh, took to Twitter and, uh, and kind of tweeted out, uh, and I quote, you can literally say no to the outsider. I've had enough of your gifts. What this means is you can actually play Dishonored 2 without the powers. Why you'd want to do that, I don't know, because I think the powers are really cool. Um, <laughs> um, and this is directly from the article. Uh, the levels have been designed with this in mind, so there is currently potential for this style of play. So basically, I'm assuming what that means is that the levels are designed so you can play them sans powers, and still it, it's possible. I'm assuming it's going to be a little harder, but it's still possible. Uh, so again, I, I'm interested in this. Uh, I cannot wait to play uh, Dishonored 2. Again, I know you're going to hear me say I cannot wait to play a lot of these games because I am super pumped up. Um... I think this year is probably one of the best years to be a gamer in a long while. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff. Um, but I'm very excited for Dishonored 2. You know, I really, I, I, I love Dishonored 1 in hindsight. I think when I played it, I'm like, this is interesting and it's cool. But I guess I didn't fully, I think, comprehend it. Because now I've played it, I've gone back and played it, and I'm like, man, this game is awesome. I, I, it's, it's really fucking good. Um... Uh, let's see here. Uh, speaking of Definitive Editions, uh, Halo Wars Definitive Edition will be part of the Halo 2 Ultimate Edition. Uh, this uh, appeared on uh, the Xbox Store. Uh, it's currently unclear as to if you can uh, get the Definitive Edition um, standalone or if it has to be part of the Halo Wars 2 Ultimate Edition. Like I said, I believe this was um, spotted on the Xbox Store article by Jonathan Dornbush of IGN. Um, you guys, guys, go go into the comments because you know I I, I want to hear other people's um, opinions on this because I I played Halo Wars to completion, the original on the P, uh, on the 360, and um, I don't know I, I really liked it. Uh, you know I, I I thought it was in in a really cool world, or again I mean it was in, it is set in the the Halo world. You know it had its own characters. You know uh, just really great characters too. I mean it looked beautiful. I believe it's not considered canon in the Halo universe, but I could be I could be wrong on that one. Um, but I don't know. Go to the comments. Tell me, uh, are you excited? What do you think of Halo Wars One? Or am I you know am I alone and just crazy? Or you know what what's going on there? Um, Nintendo has announced uh, two new Mario games. Uh, one Paper Mario Color Splash will release October seventh on Wii U. Article by Andrew Goldfarb of IGN and Mario Party Star Rush will be releasing November fourth on 3DS. Also by Andrew Goldfarb of IGN. Uh, Battlefield One will not be the only first per World War One first person shooter this year. Uh, you can also get about two months beforehand. You can get uh, Verdon, what another World War One first person shooter uh, set to release uh, August thirtieth on PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, article by Charlie Hall of Polygon. I think I remember hearing about this game. I don't know any details. Um, it looks like 
from what from some of the stills I saw, it's very trench warfare. Um, I'm gonna guess on the European front, um, but I again I have no specific details on this game. Go check it out for yourself if you're interested. Um, I'm creative director at uh, Sony Santa Monica, Corey Barlog, and uh, basically it has cleared up some details uh, on the upcoming uh, God of War, the new the new God of War. Um, there, there's kind of been this, I guess, kind of pseudo debate going on right now, kind of wondering if the new God of War will be a, is this a reboot? Is this a, you know, is this still Kratos, but we're in a new mythology? Is it this? Is it that? Um, it is official. Uh, Barlog has confirmed, uh, that the new God of War is set after God of War 3, uh, and you will play as Kratos the entire time. There's also another debate that maybe you play as the kid. They, or for part of it that you see that you you do the tutorials Kratos, but then you play as the kid for the rest of the game. But no, it has been uh, confirmed you will be playing as Kratos the entire time, and that the gameplay has completely been rebuilt. Um, watch the gameplay trailer from E3 uh, from the E3 uh, Sony press conference, and you'll see you know uh, the camera was much tighter on uh, Kratos' shoulder. It seems a lot more um, dodge and attack based than it is just hack and slash. Um, very. It, I, I've been saying I think this is kind of kind of be a jumping on point uh, for the God of War franchise for people like me who really haven't played a lot of the God of War games. This is kind of a point where we can kind of jump on and say, okay, here's what we're doing. I understand, you know, I I, I don't have to play all of the previous games, but I can but I can understand what's going on. Um, I'm very I'm very excited for it. And again, I know I keep saying it, very excited. I'm super stoked. I love Norse mythology. Um, I like Greek mythology too, but I, I don't know, something about it just being set in Norse mythology, and I love his new beard, it's really freaking cool. Um, <laughs> this quote is, um, Barlog also went on to say, and I quote, uh, we're carrying the mythology we've created with God of War and bringing it into Norse mythology. He also said, uh, and I quote, it's open, but not open world, end quote, article by Matt Paget of GameSpot. Um, the way I'm interpreting that is it's going to be something kind of like Alan Wake where there will be exploration that you can kind of go off the beaten path. Um, but it will, I'm, uh, but I believe it'll be a, a linear story and, uh, you know, a linear areas that, you know, there is one path to completion, but you can kind of branch off and maybe get a weapon or a power up or something. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Microsoft has announced a remaster of the 2005, uh, this is how the article describes it, card strategy action game, uh, and will release in 2017, and I just noticed when I was talking about that, I didn't, uh, actually put the name of the game in there. Phantom Dust, uh, will be available, uh, for play in 2017, article by Joe Scrubbles of IGN. Um, jeez. <laughs> Uh, kind of now into, uh, probably a big theme that was going on, uh, at E3 this year, um, is zombie games. <laughs> um, some of my State of Decay 2 questions, uh, have been answered in an article by, uh, Ryan McCaffrey of IGN, uh, specifically as to whether or not this game will be an MMO or a co-op multiplayer, or what, what's this one going to be? And I now have my answer. It will not be an MMO. Uh, it will be a, it will feature four player drop in, drop out co-op, uh, I believe similar to what, uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands is going to have, um, and does not require an internet connection. I'm not a hundred percent sure if that means you, if there's couch co-op, or if that just means I can play by myself and don't need to be hooked up to the internet at all. I hope it means the latter, not the former, um, latter being the second, um, so that's, uh, you know, I'm, again, I'm a big set of Decay fan. I love the original. Um, it's just, it's such a cool idea that just this big open world just, it's one of the few times I will praise a game for not being super narrative, just for the fact that the game, it's so much fun just to kind of go and scavenge and explore in that game, kind of make your own story. And again, I'm also not a um, defender of the, you know, make your own story kind of games, but I'm right like State of Decay, it just had this kind of goofy atmosphere, uh, with very simple combat, but it was so much fun just to, like I said, run around and loot and scavenge and, uh, deal with other survivors, I, I, I cannot wait for this game, I mean, it, it, it cannot get here fast enough, um, I believe coming out next year, um, 
And uh, the graphics engine has been upgraded. Uh, State of the K2 will be using the Unreal 4 engine uh, as opposed to the CryEngine tech that it used in the previous game. Our, like I said, article by Ryan McCaffrey of IGN. Um, and if anybody out there is wondering why I might have thought that this game would have um, been an MMO, the original State of Decay was planned as an MMO, uh, at, at least from what I from what I remember hearing, that you know, it was planned as an MMO, uh, but then became a single-player experience. Um, I, and I thought that one had co-op, but apparently not. Um, let's see here. Uh, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Uh, if any, you know, uh, if any of you out there are PlayStation Plus subscribers, uh, you can go and play the demo right now. It's free for um, download on the PlayStation Store. Um, although it has been confirmed that this will not be a part of the main game, uh, and the game will also release uh, January twenty fourth, twenty seventeen. Article by Alex Osborne of IGN. Um, in another article I was reading, you know, they were answering some questions um, that I guess some people have been having. Uh, one, it's that. Um, I'm trying to think here, uh, exactly, like, Resident Evil 7 is, it, it, it's the next numbered franchise, numbered game in the franchise, um, but again, it seems like another jumping on point, um, because I, I don't think, I think it's a new experience in the world and in the lore, um, but it, you know, it will be, I guess, kind of, will play into the overarching narrative of the Resident Evil franchise, um, I think here, uh, the entire game will be in first person, uh, whether you play in VR or not, uh, you know, and again, if, by, if you hear me say VR or not, uh, you can also, you don't have to play in VR, it does support VR, but it is uh, not a requirement to play the game. Uh, it heavily was inspired by Resident Evil 1 and American style horror films, so I don't, I don't know exactly how they would change it, um, you know, be, Resident Evil being a Japanese game, I, I always thought it was very heavily, um, uh, inspired by Japanese horror, which, I, I, I really don't know, it, it, Japanese horror is really weird, and I mean, there have been a few American, um, Jap uh, uh, American horror movies that were, um, uh, adapted from Japanese horror, I believe The Ring being one of them, um, just, it, 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 it it's, I don't know exactly how that's going. Maybe it will make it less scary to a Westerner, Westerner like me. I think maybe they're kind of going for a new aesthetic, um, kind of like how this game will be in first person, not third, which kind of weirds me out. But I don't know. I'm interested. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think. There's one. There's one other thing in there that made sense that I thought was interesting. Um, I can't think of it. Um, but like I said, um, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, uh, January 24th, 2017, keep your eyes out for it. Um, and now, probably to the thing that caught, or that piqued my interest the most, uh, not just during the Sony press conference, but I think all the E3 press, press conferences combined, really just E3 in general, uh, the game, uh, Sony Ben's Days Gone, uh, the game absolutely fascinated me, you know, it has to, it had this beautiful look. Um, kind of a semi-roguish character in a post-apocalyptic world, you know, I, I I love that kind of stuff, you know, it's like, this game, from everything that I've been reading about it, it seems like it's kind of like the open world Last of Us game that I wanted, <laughs> um, I have, like I said, uh, I have some more details on the game, uh, this game you will be playing as Deacon St. John, a drifting bounty hunter, and a former biker gang member. Uh, this game takes place two years after a global disaster uh, that apparently wipes out most of Earth, most of the Earth's population and uh, turned a majority into things or the the zombies in this. Um, the, the zombies in this game called the Freakers. Uh, they are not dead, and there are a lot of them. <laughs> uh, if you go, you check out the uh, the gameplay trailer or gameplay reveal um, of Days Gone from the end of the Sony press conference. That I mean, like, you know, it shows Deacon just, like, just thousands of these things coming at you, you know, it's like, he's basically, you know, like, standing and shooting, I think there was another article that I read that said, if you had unlimited ammo in that game, and you just stood and shoot, you will not have enough bullets to take out all of them, um, I, I, I'm very excited for this game, uh, like I said, this, this was the one that I think interested me the most, um, and I, and I think this quote uh, from the PlayStation blog, I think, kind of wraps it up everything together of what the freakers are it says and i quote eat move and attack together almost as one 
end quote. I, I that I mean that I think right there. I think this means they're more of a cohesive bunch than the um, than the Walkers or whatever from The Walking Dead and the you know most typical zombie games because these things fly at you and it, it, these things are almost like like they all kind of have a hive mind kind of mentality like these things are super freaky not freakers uh and like i said this this game just looks fan fantastic article by chloe rad of ign now in pro to probably the most famous microsoft owned zombie ip dead rising 4 um <laughs> so microsoft has confirmed uh that the xbox store the listing on the xbox store uh is correct dead rising 4 will release this december on december 6th uh article by jordan uh sirani of ign uh microsoft has also revealed that uh dead rising 4's exclusivity is timed what exactly that means i'm not 100 percent sure uh more details on that though uh it will be exclusive on windows 10 for 90 days and on console one year um, so basically, uh, the article kind of speculates that after the 90-day period, um, it will not only be just available on the Windows 10, but will also be available on Steam and uh, PS4 after the one year on Xbox. Um, this would not make it the only uh, Dead Rising game to appear on a PlayStation console, uh, because Dead Rising 2 uh, appeared on the PS3. Article by Matt Porter by GN. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've had very mixed feelings about... Um, uh, I've had, I'm sorry, I've had very mixed feelings, I guess, about uh, the Dead Rising franchise over the years. Uh, I'm very excited to see what they do with this one, um, especially because, you know, Frank West is back, you know, we're back in Willamette, you know, the the um, pseudo-Mall of America-esque mall that we had in the first game. Um, I'm very interested to see what they're going to do with this game narratively. Um, you know, uh, Dead Rising 3 was really kind of cool um uh, I'm, I'm not gonna spoil anything if you haven't uh, go check out the endings to, to dead rising 3 dead rising 3 uh you know had some really interesting brought back some old characters um it just it just really funny i i cannot wait to see it um and what they will be doing with this i, I guess the storied franchise uh guys that's all i have for you uh in this video like i said tune in uh sometime tomorrow pr probably before noon i will be doing the final video um Jesus Christ, in this three-part series um, covering everything that wasn't at E3. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, like I said, uh, next week the show will be back to its usual format, uh, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on Friday. Uh, check out my Let's Plays, uh, Facebook, Twitter, my website in the description. Um, <laughs> like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the videos. If you want to support the channel, you want to talk to me, always happy to do it. Um, other than that, guys, uh, like I said, that's all I got for you. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'm AJ Gills. This is the Lump Diver Gaming Channel. Tune in tomorrow. I'm out.